So let's talk about some more advanced features of the retopology brush. Now there's a different way you can start at creating your topology, just by holding Alt and then dragging a line on the surface. And then as you keep dragging that line, you can see ZBrush is gonna start generating that poly loop around those lines that you just created. Now, if you tap and hold these points, you can see we can move them individually. So we can maybe make this a little thinner like that. But you can also click and drag on these edges and it's gonna create new edge loops as you drag from left to right. Same thing goes for these top edges. You can just add edge loops in between. So let's say we wanna add one over here. And now you can see it's still snapping to the surface because this is still a temporary topology because it's colored blue and the dots are colored green. That means that we have to tap on the surface in order to create that topology, or we just delete it like we did with the points by holding control and dragging outside. Now, in order to create that topology, you tap on the surface and there you go, we have our final topology. Now, one of the things that you just noticed here is that as I'm moving this topology, you can see there are two things happening. One is that it's affecting that mesh over there based on the draw size of my brush. And I can change that draw size and trying to move around the points, but this is not optimal because it's still affecting that part of the mesh. And not only that, it's trying to snap the points. If I go over here and move this point over there, it's snapping to that, those points. Now these settings and much more are all located over here under our brush palette. If you have the retopo brush selected, click this settings icon, and you can see it's the settings of the retopo brush. And if you scroll down, you can find the retopology tab. And over here, we have the ability to change the snapping threshold of our points. We have the ability to change the move by draw size. So now if I turn this off, for example, and I go over here, even if I have a big draw size, you can see it's just moving every single one of the points one at a time. And the same goes for the edges, right? Just moving one at a time if you wanna be more precise. Not only that, but it's also affected by the focal shift, meaning that if I change my focal shift over here to be something like that, it's still moving based off of that fall off. Now, if I grab a big focal shift, you can see it's moving more than one, but they're basically moving at the same rate. Now, another thing that we've added is the ability to smooth the topology and still have that snapped to the surface. Now, if I hold the smooth button or shift key and start smoothing, you can see I'm smoothing out that surface. Maybe it's easier to, to see if I just add like a few edge loops over here, for example, and let me add some more edge loops over here. Now, if I want to smooth out that middle part and I start smoothing with a smooth brush, you can see it's spreading those out evenly, but it's still snapping and conforming to the underlying surface. And this, again, works with multiple subtools. We have those eyes over there. You can add some more topology over here. And as I'm smoothing, it's snapping to both subtools. As you can see that the outer edge of this topology is not getting smoothed out. And this is because there's a default setting, the smooth brush, that doesn't allow you to change the shape of the overall border. Now, in order to ignore that setting, you have to keep the Apple Pencil Pro engaged and then let go of shift. And now those borders are actually gonna get smoothed out. Now, of course, they smooth it out a lot, and maybe this is the effect you want, but if you don't, well, all you need to do is actually change the intensity of your smooth brush whenever you're doing something like this, and then start smoothing and let go. Now you can see it's just smoothing out ever so slightly to be more conforming to the rest of the topology. You can obviously just turn that on and off by turning on and off this alternate smooth button on our retopology settings, and you can see, for example, when it comes to the snapping, if I go down here and move this edge to snap it over there, move that point to snap it over there, and then move that point and snap it over there. Now, if I want this to not snap at all, I can go over here and change that snap threshold to zero. And now you can see that no matter how much I move it around the other point, it's not snapping at all. And now if I go over here, I can also change the way this works and behaves based on the mesh as it's welded or vert welded. 
So I can go over here and go to my auto masking settings and turn on topological. So if I turn on topological on my retopology brush and I move this over here and then I start moving it, you can see it's not affecting the other mesh because it's not topologically related. They're not vert welded. Now it doesn't snap as well because it's not affecting that mesh at all. When you tap on that surface, it's just engaging with this shell on the polygons. In order for it to snap again, I would have to go back to auto masking, turn off topological, and then go back to retopology and increase that snap threshold. Let's say I put it at 0.5 and then go back and move those points until they snap. 